Let's see if you can get it running. I do. That's yeah, a closer look at it. So I picked up a bunch of machines at an estate sale about, uh, about six weeks ago or so. And this is one of the pieces. Don't know how long it sat. Don't know the condition of it. Said it, it ran. Well, they all ran at one time, right? I'm going to guess it's like a 78. I would think it was a girl's bike. Just saying. And the sax motor. So it has a decompression valve, but the end's broken off of it. Tires are somewhat dry rotted. it. If it picks up. The seat is. <laughs> I don't know about how comfortable that's going to be. It says it has 3,600 miles on it. And this is always a tell. Smell it. Doesn't look like it's really rusty. It doesn't feel like it's really rusty. I'll shine a light in there in a second. It's a throttle roll. Kinda. Doesn't exactly doesn't exactly spring back to place. I'm sure what's living in there. Well, let's get it up in the air. We'll start getting into it and see what we can find. Hopefully, we can uh, bring it back to life. Got a flashlight. Let's take a quick look in that tank. Didn't say it looks too bad. That's a good sign. I'm not sure if you could see it, but December of 79, so it's a, an 80. This video is being sponsored by 3-in-1. For over 120 years, 3-in-1 multi-purpose oil has been a trusted tool for lubricating moving parts, penetrating rust, cleaning and protecting tools, and more. 3-in-1 multi-purpose oil lubricates hinges, nuts, bolts, bicycles, wheels, fans, and other moving parts. 3-in-1 multi-purpose oil prevents rust, corrosion, and can be used on hand and power tools. I wish we get some of the, the plastic wear off. Of it. Looks like it had two more screws there that are missing already. I'm sure this cover's been off a few times in its life. Alright. do you think it's holding that? That's a funky looking air box. It's pretty clean though. Not sure if that's supposed to be oiled or not, but it's oiled now. Let's uh, get the one off the other side. Looks like somebody shoved a screw in this one. Guess what's going in the other side? <laughs> Pretty much the same thing. So, pretty sure what's happening with that guy. Any day now. 17 feet long. Come on. <laughs> really? Holy. It's got a battery. That's different. And judging by the looks of it, I don't think it's going to be taking a charge anytime soon. Actually, I actually don't think there's any, any fluid left in it. Let's see what we got for an engine. Uh, 
Oh, my glasses on, I can't see. You guys want to read that? Looks like it just says, what's that, 47 cc's? Let's see what it says for horsepower. Now I can see. BIPO 5-1. I don't know what hub R stands for. And I don't know what that stands for. It doesn't matter because there's nothing stamped in there anyway. Uh, I would say probably, why don't we put you in a stand? We'll take the plug out of it. And we'll give it a spin to see if we have any spark. We'll start with that. Let's pop that out of there. I don't know if this is going to need a battery to have spark. Some do, some don't. It might be just to help the lights when it's uh, at idle to stay bright. Or it might need it altogether. You guys see? We're gonna see if it's got a kill. Let's see, any kill switch on this thing? Should be one somewhere, right? It's got a stop button, so it's a momentary button. Uh, we should have a lever that we pull in to make it so that. All right, so I'm gonna go with the one on the left handlebar. Where does the cable go? That'll tell us. Goes to the engine. I go with that. That is gonna, that's gonna make life a little easier. I say we dump a little pre-mix down in it and give it a kick and see how it sounds. Use 40 to one, it probably runs 50 to one, but for something that hasn't run in a while, it'd be nice to put something down in it for a little bit more uh, lube on the, on the cylinder walls. Let's go give her a little a bit of that. Might have been a little too much of that. You can do this without falling off the bench. Just pedal it. <laughs> Good. It'll run. Throttle's stuck wide open now, but it'll run. One thing I do see is the uh, pet is broken right off the carburetor, off the um, gas tank uh, shut off valve. Yeah. I don't think we're going to be fixing that. Let's see if we can get that carb apart. Get it freed up. And we'll probably, while the carb is cleaning, from the body. Alright. Oh, we got a choke cable. Check out that choke. It's a piece of plastic that gets pulled in front of the intake. Where's the choke? Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> That's the choke. That's different. It's uh probably unscrew that air box and just leave it right with it. One carburetor. Let's go on the bench and uh, take it apart. Let's go pop that bowl off and See what we're in for. I'm trying to think of what I can come up with other than a, an alternate fuel tank for now for that for that pet. Hmm. 
Not too bad at all. That's a good sign. What a funky looking float though, huh? Jet doesn't look dirty. Let's go tap that float out. We'll take a look at the needle and see, and we'll pop the jet out. In we go. Let's see if we can tap that pin down. but yet so far is that gonna fit all the way down <laughs> all right we'll go for a super a super thin one is that gonna have enough reach no oh, well good that's a good sign at least the uh, mechanicals were taken care of or it was run out of fuel before it was um, put away yeah it's very clean I think it actually might be clogged though I do see a a bridge over it as far as uh, if that shows up in the camera or not you could actually see that there's a uh, a shiny spot right over the intake of that jet. Yeah. Cleaning should take care of that though. An air gun might even blow it out. Yeah, see if you can go pop that with a bristle. There it goes. Now I can push through it. Yeah, it was not going to run unless that carburetor came apart. So, although it wasn't that dirty, it needed to come apart anyway. Because that passage was 100% blocked. If that's 100% blocked, no fuel was going to go up. Looks like it has a primer on it too, which is you push that down. That holds the float down and allows the fuel to come up over a level and, and kind of flood the, uh, the intake a little. Might even just be for prime in the... Uh, that's exactly what it is, the primer. That is the idle speed. I do not see an air fuel mix on it anywhere, do you? No. It is what it is. It's just going to run. That's one beat. I do see the gasket. Looks a hair missing right on that corner. Not sure if that would cause an, is an issue. Other than a leak, it shouldn't. Sometimes it could be sensitive to, to the air fuel mix, though, if the uh, bowl is sucking air. I'm going to throw some pieces in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to throw the whole carpet thing. I'm going to leave that gasket alone. And it's not terribly dirty, so I'm not going to worry about washing it for a really long period of time. But part of that gasket is still left on the float bowl. So, again, we'll leave that on there, too. And hopefully the pieces kind of marry themselves back up again. Let's throw the needle in there. What else do you want to throw in there? Float's just gonna float out, but we can still wash that. Might as well wash the adjusting nut and the pin. That's pretty much about it, huh? That would help. That's the most important one. It needs to be cleaned. All right. And into the bath you go. All right, you're gonna fight me just by about that much, aren't you? There's our float floating. Go. Throw a little bit of vibrations on that. We'll go let her do her thing. And while that's soaking, we could probably turn our attention back to the bike. Uh, I don't think that's going to be very good anymore. Has the two front directionals. It has nothing in the back. Chain doesn't look terrible. see any lumping in it that's a good sign what do you say we pop the oil plug out of it we'll see what the fluid looks like in the bottom of the crankcase and then maybe after that we'll go and take a uh, uh, 
some parts cleaner and we'll start washing some of the crap off of here and just get it a little bit cleaner to work with. I can bring it out with a pressure washer and pressure wash it. Hope my dog doesn't want his uh, dog dish back. Gotta look up what goes in it. <laughs> well, <Wow. laughs> that's a tad dry. That's saying that it's supposed to have fluid in there, but I would think it would, wouldn't you? Let's go look around. It might be another area of the gear case that takes some fluid. That would be a drain. That's solid across. Let's uh, probe it. That might be the fill line that's supposed to be filled to, and then it runs out. I would say that's where you fill it. Let's just see if there's, yeah, there's oil in it. Pretty dark, but there's oil in it. Yeah, let's figure out a way. What does a way other than removing this color, color cover, to uh, get the fluid out? I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the screw back in. I'm gonna pressure wash it first, get all this crap off of it, and then uh, we'll continue on. Might be a good idea to uh, plug that intake before we do anything. Let's try shoving a plastic bag in there a little bit. Now that we hit it with water, I'm going to come back and hit it with compressed air and we'll blow off what we can. I'd say that looks a little cleaner. Uh, while I'm waiting for that carb, I know we still have to deal with the gearbox. Let's go see if we can pop that that pet off of there. Let's see if there's anything we could do with that, and also see what kind of flows out of the tank. Flows out of the tank looks like it's crappy gas. <laughs> Might want to get a pan for that. You now sometimes you expect something to be perfectly dry. Well, at least they didn't come out with a bunch of crap. It just that's good. And then drip down. I don't think we're gonna have a fix for that. Unfortunately, other than ordering another one, but there is two mopeds out back i'm going to go take a quick look actually I have, I have a moped fuel tank too in, in the stash let's go see if uh anything has a pet on there that possibly we can use on this tank out in the graveyard there's these two bikes that i kind of planned on making one out of they're pretty much the same bike but i'd like to see if possibly that does not look like it's going to be the same thread though does it hold on i brought it with me Yeah, it does not look like it's going to be the same. I wonder if we can... I wonder if it turns. I'm trying to think if we can make an adapter. That one even looks worse. Somebody already beat us to that one. That one's got a piece of hose. A piece of plumbing on it for a valve. I may have found a victim. What do you think about that one? Maybe. We're just gonna borrow it for a little piece of time. 
And that still has a hose connected to it? No. Feels like it's kind of cross-threaded on there. You need to watch me take that off of there. We'll get that out and see what we got. Yeah. Hopefully it's the same thread. So yes, maybe. Not like it needs to be a permanent fix, we could order the right one. But it'd be nice for now just to have something. That might work. We're gonna go take that apart and see if we can make that a, a functioning part of society again. That carb should be almost ready. Let's see if we can get this open. We'll trade places with it. We'll throw this in the cleaner. We should probably pop that seal out of there. It looks like it's already kind of swollen enough. It's got some crap floating around. I don't know if that's supposed to spin on the body of this or not. And it's just seized up or that's just the way this style of this one is. Don't know if I want to take that apart or not. Let's just try throwing it in the cleaner for a little bit and see how it how it does. And let's go see how dinner's our dinner's doing. Do our best not to damage any of those gasket surfaces. And this guy we can probably just drop right in there. And we'll let that thing. Go for about 10 minutes. Let that clean up. Let's see how these guys look. The gasket got a little bit more hunky. Quite want to leave it in there that long, but got it on the old phone and started chatting with somebody. You know how that goes. Let's go blow that stuff off and reassemble it and we'll do our best not to screw with that gasket at all. And we'll probably add that to the shopping list of see if we can get at least a gasket for that. But at least it'll be clean. Yeah, I was chatting with Mr. Harvey Spooner on some... Easy. On some uh, upcoming projects of the motorized kind. That one right there is the money shot, making sure that that path is clear. Very good. That's just a set screw. Wish I had an adjustment for the idle, but we'll see how well it does when it comes back. I'll go reassemble that. That like that, or like that. I'm going to go like that.
a little needle. Clean that up a little. I want to say probably the first time I used three in one. It's probably about five years old. And your bicycle. <laughs> See, I remember doing my chain with it. I also like the smell. I always remember the smell of it. It was pleasant. Pretty, much pretty clean. I think we're probably going to have an issue with the uh, the slide on the handlebars, though. I'm looking for the pin where it slides into there. All right back there is the pin. Um, that slope right there is the uh, adjustment when you adjust the set screw in for the idle speed. What it does is it just holds the slide up a little bit more or less and it lands right on that. And the pin down below just meters how much fuel. So this meters how much air can come in and that meters how much fuel can come in. So that goes down to the jet that we had out earlier. See if we can get that to fit back together. See if it'll slide. Yeah. So that part will be fine now. That was chalky before. Um, but I think the throttle cable. Get around you. That's the throttle cable though. It's real chalky, it just kind of stays where it is. It should kind of roll back. So we should probably get into that before we put the car back on. Yeah, let's go take care of that. Okay, so this is not doing what it should. It's just kind of staying wherever it wants to stay. It's like somebody's been in there, the nuts off of it. Let's see about, usually there's two screws kind of holding this assembly together. We can pop that apart and get this off of here and maybe we'll clean this up. I already cracked the one loose. Where's the other one? Is that it? I would say that's one of them. wires can be holding the turn signal part of it. I wonder if we could choke up on those a little. I want to tear them apart, you know. It's, we're just trying to get to the, the throttle part of it. Can we slide that whole assembly right off? We're down to the cable. Cable returns a little bit of drag. I say we dump some oil down inside that. Let's see if we can I was thinking about taking that bracket off to give us more room, but then the, there still has a wire going to the kill button. So it might be better off just leaving that alone. Yeah, I think maybe we're going to try throwing some some oil down that line and see if that'll help that. It's a little hard to see. Let's see if we can. Uh, and it's running in. I have that coil able uh, oiler too, but 
Actually, that's feeling pretty good. I think we can go with that. I can tell you the inside of that grip looks a little on the uh, chalky side. Go give her. some of that. We're going to use it for lube anyway on the inside, so. Yeah, it's wet again. Don't wipe that off. It's nice to get a nice light coat of oil on that stuff too because it stops rust. Helps stop rust. Let's see if that will spin on there. Nice. I'm going to throw a drop or two in it. And we'll reassemble that and see how it works. And back together. That's a little better. I'll wipe off my mitts. Didn't do that before. Yeah, let's see if we can get that slide back in there. See how that slide works now. There we go. It's gonna go like that. And we have fuel system again, well, other than our pet. And back to our next victim. Let's see how that guy looks. I can tell you it's hot. Let's see if we can take that apart maybe a little bit more. Start blowing through the cavities. Let's see, if come back. Bing. Yeah, let's see if that guy will work for us. Sure, what's what here? That should be on. I believe that blows through that bowl and then back up through that. And like the bubbling coming around there, that's not a good sign. Try like that. I think that's on. <laughs> My own's got to be on. 
or it's just so clogged that nothing's happening. Let's go see if we can get that little screw out of it and take the chamber right out. The screwdriver might be too big. A hair too big but not big enough to make me go walk over to the drawer and get the correct one you know what i mean i'll struggle <laughs> with this one okay. let's see it blocked there actually there's some sludge in there a little piece of something in there A little piece of crap pushes out of there. I feel like there should be another one right next to this. Like, so the tall one would be the res uh, the run. I probably should show you on the other one. Where's the other one? There it is right in front of us. So that would be run. The fuel tank would run down to that level and then it would start sucking the air and then the machine would start dying. You switch over to reserve and reserve is usually another port right next to it on the side. And then you could run, you know, you have that much fuel, another inch and a half or so of fuel left over for you. You get out. This one looks like somebody broke the top of it off and i don't know if the other port is doing what it's doing and when you turn this barrel this barrel just kind of lines the ports up to, with each other straight through i was just trying to blow air straight through it and it wouldn't go Let's... that one's clear that one is not clear yeah, so that's a problem that one there is not clear we're gonna probably get ourselves a little tiny drill bit and we'll feed it down inside there, see if we can kind of clean up what's in there. Let's see if this will work for us. Yeah, right at the bottom there's a... Let's see if you can see it punch through. Oh, yep, there it goes. Yeah, that was definitely a, a brick wall it was hitting. I wonder if I should throw it maybe back in the ultrasonic cleaner a little bit with all that apart and let that get up inside there would probably be our best bet. I think. Let's see about. Okay. Should have an open path to there. Blow some air in it, right? That'll tell us. Yeah, that, that path is free. That path is now free. I'm going to throw it back in that cleaner, like I said, and let it soak just a little bit more, see if we can get some of that that crap that's inside there out. I put another Q-tip on a drill and do a little bit of polishing. I was wondering whether I should pull the tank off or not to just try to get a little bit left that's in the tank out of this. Try shooting some air in there. And again, fortunately, that fuel looks nice and clean. It's old, but it's clean. So whoever uh, used whatever fuel before, it definitely did not have ethanol in it. That is a, <laughs> that's just a plain fact. Uh, that pet should be almost ready. The gearbox, I am going to wait on it. I do not see, I took a look underneath with a mirror, and I did not see anything that looked like a drain plug to empty that. So I don't know if you're supposed to take this cover off, if you're supposed to take that screw off, maybe lean the bike to one side and let it drain out. And I also need to look up what fluid goes back in it. And again, that's just for the gearbox part of it. It has nothing to do with the crankcase. Uh, you're not going to hurt the crankshaft by not changing this oil. I have a feeling that is just, again, for the, the 
whatever gear setup is behind here or CVT. I just don't know what's in there. Clutch. Uh, that's probably what that's for. So for the short run, hopefully we're able to do with it. I'm not going to worry about it. I am still have to do a shopping list, get a bunch of things for this. And, uh, you know, who knows? Might get a gasket set for the engine, gasket set for the car, but I'll leave that be for now. The Peacock's back out of there. And uh, I looked in in there with a light and it's not looking great. So they say we're going to go try and see if we can polish that up a little. Watch your eyes. And where's the barrel that goes in there? Yeah. We'll definitely say it has a better shot than it did before, right? All right, let's see if it passes now. So the reserve, no, we don't want res we want on that was on so that should make us a straight shot right through there Yay! and then we're off she get nothing I shot the pin I shot shot the barrel out let's be easy on that I'd say yeah go reserve reserve should push us out that hole see if we can back feed it Yep, and reserve works too. What there is left of reserve. <laughs> we only have a, a five mile range on that reserve. All right, let's go put the bowl back on it and see if we could thread this thing back up onto the uh, fuel tank. I took that carb back off just to give us room to spin this. This nut kind of wants to spin on the base a little bit, but I don't want to push my luck in manipulating that. So hopefully we can just kind of turn it to where it jams up good location for us I don't know if I want to push it much more past that I say we could probably dribble a little bit of fuel on it and check actually we're not gonna be able to go we're not gonna be able to go up are we <laughs> it has to go <laughs> You want to go with something like that? Yeah. Get a piece of fuel line on there, dump a little fuel in it. Yeah. What do you say we dump a little bit of fuel in it? We're going to go with uh, 40 to 1. Let's see if that comes bleeding out of it anywhere. Go for on. That's good. Let's go for reserve. That's good. Let it push out whatever debris was in the bottom. I think we're going to be okay. Say we can hook that fuel line up. We'll tighten up the carb screw. Probably could fire it up, I think. Oh yeah, noise alert. Pop the air cleaner housing back on because that has the choke built into it. So let's go with on. And hopefully it just doesn't keep taking fuel and overflow. <laughs> that would be the needle on seat. Thank you. I don't see gas pouring out of it. We should try starting it. Hey, right, you ready to rock and roll? Let's see what we get. Want to try it without the choke? Try it without the choke.
That's pretty good. And then the, the battery tried making a jump for it. Let's uh, get that battery off of there. They're gonna rev it up, it's gonna fall. We just disconnect it. Back friend's a little on the wobbly side. Let's get the battery off. That's what we got for a kill. There's a kill, that works. Or a little painter staple suffice too. All right, let's do, uh, fire it back up again and kind of rev it up and see how she does on the higher ripples. You can do this one uh, one footed. It's gonna blow some smoke out. That's for sure. up a little too. Then later we'll end up probably turning it down. We'll leave it there for a minute. Now what do we got for brakes? It actually has coaster brakes on it. That's weird. We know we have those, and these are probably going to be the front. Can I die on us? We're going to really rev a little. the air cleaner might help it a little bit again I don't know if that filter it go? I don't know if that filter is a foil it feels like it's a little oil soaked so it might choke it off altogether there it is. let's go find out if this thing's gonna make it starve or not Try putting it on. If worst case, we'll leave it off and we'll order a new one. But again, it feels like it's been oil soaked and it shouldn't be. I think it's just a paper filter, not meant to have that. All right, I got that air box back on there with the filter. Let's see if it'll run with it.
just gonna order a new one either way, but sounds good. Makes it nice and quiet, huh? You think we're gonna get any lights? Put up that battery. The one, the horn one. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. Where is it? <laughs> Uh, let's go for headlights. Yeah, we got the headlight. Awesome. Directionals, I doubt. I doubt they're going to do anything. The back two aren't even connected, so. I'm pretty sure that's going to need a battery for that. We got a puppy back in the stand. See if we can rev it up and see if the horn will work when it gets revved up. Directional flashing. A very, the horn makes a very dim sound. So I think the actual is actually a problem with the horn itself, not that I'm that concerned about it. Sometimes they have a set screw in the back of them, you can kind of tweak them a little bit and it'll come back. But until it gets a battery in it, uh, I'm not going to worry about chasing that stuff. I say we throw some air in the tires and uh, maybe we take her down off the lift and give her a little putt around and see how she does. So I think this might be made for four footers. I'm looking at the, uh, I was going to try cranking the seat up higher. I do not see an adjustable post. I guess we can loosen it. No, I ain't gonna make anything. I'll just make a lean on an angle. I guess we're riding it the way it is. <laughs> I said we throw that one cover on there, just kind of hold that battery in place. That can lead to a. Uh, didn't it have it? Is that supposed to slide over the cover? It was at one time. I bet you somebody put a bigger battery in there. It wasn't supposed to have it. Somebody actually cut that and notched it. Made it fit. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna make it fit too. Use the nut from the other side. I might even have. I'm not sure if that was six or twelve. I gotta look at it again. I may even have a, uh, a battery that'll fit. That'll hold it. All right, let's see if we got tail light. How about brake light? Nope. I don't even see wires for a brake light switch. I don't think it ever had one. That's weird, you have directionals but no brake light? Oh well. Not much on drinking and driving. I think we can get rid of the cup holder. Yeah, we don't need that. So close, but yet so far. <laughs> One issue is you go to turn the wheel all the way and it pulls on the throttle cable and it makes it so that the throttle does not back off. So I may want to fix that. I'm going to try maybe rerouting it. I don't know if they have how they kind of have it going up under the tank and through the handlebar. I might have to just take another path with it. it. Looks like the way they got it routed goes down through here, around, and down to the tank, and down. Uh, the only shortcut I th see we can take is going to be on the other side of this fork tube when we run it down through here give us a little bit more slack shall we <laughs>
Hopefully the throttle doesn't stick. Speedometer doesn't work. Brakes work though. I'd say we go try it on the street. What do you say? I say it does 30, that's for sure. back at the office I uh, ran nice and no real complaints it has more work definitely needs to be done but you know pretty much everything does what it's supposed to do uh, transmission kind of chatters a little bit so I want to look into that and you hit about five miles an hour it seems like you get some vibration and it goes away so that may be something kind of going on inside there or just maybe a fluid change and uh, that kind of thing so I'm not sure what's in there yet we gotta get an education on that so need an air cleaner it's kind of oil soaked you can kind of feel a little boggy plus i'm sure the exhaust is a little on the restricted side probably has some carbon build up with that too so you want to take the baffle out of there and uh, burn off the crap that's inside of there speedo is not working i don't know if it needs a cable or the head we can look into that i like the fact that the uh it has coaster brakes for the rear brakes instead of uh lever brakes we need a set of directionals to go chase, a battery to go chase, and maybe a carb kit. The petcock seems like it's working fine. It's not leaking. That's not an issue. And that's about it. 
and maybe another one or two videos on this and then she'll be uh, good to go. Hey guys, I just want to take a second again to thank 3 one Oil for uh, sponsoring my video. It's a great product and a great company. Like I said earlier, I used been using it since I was a little kid. Uh, my bicycle, I think I would be doing the chains, the, uh, you know, bikes were <laughs> left out in the rain. Didn't have, even have a garage at that time. And uh, the only saving grace was the 3-in-1. Uh, I actually think I used to put it on a rag too and kind of wipe the frame down and kind of help keep it from rusting somewhat. And the wheels worked really good and it still works really good today. The, uh, I've kind of updated a little bit. It used to be a metal can at that time. And uh, <laughs> now they've gone to a plastic one and the plastic one has a little sight side sight window so you can kind of see how much uh, fluid is left in it. You can also uh, clip the very top of it to open it and then it has a cap that is attached permanently to it so you don't lose it. So uh, if you want to help support my channel and support me, you could do that by supporting my sponsors. Again, it's a great product and a great company. You wouldn't be seeing it on my channel if it wasn't. And for those who have been watching my channel for a long time, you'll notice that you never really see anything on my channel that's getting sponsored. And there's a reason for that is that I only want to put things on here that I can believe in and stand behind. And that's a product that I can do that. So down in the description, there's going to be a link to uh, where you can find the product, uh, you know, other than the regular Home Depot, Walmart, and all the big box stores that kind of carry it. 